I'm Peter Block here in Denver, Colorado at TCT for On the Scene. Uh, with me is Manos Brolakis from Minneapolis, and uh, Manos has just finished talking about uh, a new trial for CTOs. So Manos, I'm not going to take away your thunder. Tell me about the trial. Thanks, Peter. So the study is called Crossbows First. It's uh, the first trial comparing uh, different wire escalation versus crossbows for crossing coronary CTOs. We randomized 246 patients, half got the crossbows first and half got the wire first. What we found is that uh, success was 88% same in both groups. Crossing time was similar in both groups, but it was actually shorter in the subgroup of uh, people with instant stenosis. Also found that it was safe. Actually, perforations tended to be less in the crossbows group, 0.06 was the p-value. And then uh, uh, people uh, did, did very well. The one other thing we found is that in terms of cost, the cost was similar in the guide wire escalation and the crossbow first group. You know, I think that's really a central question, isn't it? Does the crossbow cost more? And it really doesn't. So it does cost more, but you have to use something. Either a microcaster costs a lot of money, crossbow costs a lot of money. In the end, it was a wash, a similar cost for both uh, strategies. Because you use multiple wires, right? It's, it's the wires and the microcatheter cost. Uh, the stand cost was the same in both groups, as you can imagine. There was one concern about longer stand length with the crossbow. That was not true. It was the same stand length. But you pay a little more for the crossbow, a little more microcatheter in the two arms. But in the end of the day, it was a similar cost. Yeah. So the similarity here, I think a lot of people will say, uh, so what? This is the same all the way across. So why bother with the crossbow? But I think the instant stenosis is a particularly important part of this, isn't it? Yeah, so there are a um, couple of papers, one of them we published a few years ago, that it works very well in this group because the stand acts as a barrier, keeping the crossbow in the lumen. So that's a group that it works very well. But I think even in the guide wire group, 22% of the patients actually ended up being re-entry as the final successful strategy. So the message is, even if you start with wires, end of the day, you may need this in a quarter of the cases to be successful and get the lesion recanalized. Okay, so for all the folks out there, tell me what the, the take-home message is from your trial. Because the take, there are three take-home messages. The first one is that whether you start with the guide wire or the crossbow, you're going to be successful equally high and you're going to have similar crossing time. Number two, in the eccentric stenosis, that's where actually the crossbow seems to have an advantage. And number three, it's safe. And actually, you have to have this technique because in a quarter of the cases, you're going to need it regardless of how you start the case. Thank you, Vanas.